Now, I was introduced to the next story while I was an intern at First UU of Richmond, Virginia. It was presented as a play of sorts in a multi-generational service where families were brought to the front of the sanctuary to act out the story while my good friend and spiritual director, Rhonda Wingfield, narrated. At the time, she was the director of religious education responsible for about 200 children. The Lumpy Frumpy Little Christmas Candle is an adaptation of another star story called The Winter Candle. Now I have to warn you, the way this is supposed to work is the families come to the front and you put their names into the story. Well, we're not going to invite you to come up here and act it out today, but I did pick and choose among congregants I know. So some of you might be surprised to hear your names. And in all fairness, I have to say, remember, this is not a true story about them. So, Crystal, I need you to remind me the name of the apartment complex. Let's say Riverside Towers. Life at Riverside Towers in Jacksonville, Florida is always lively and friendly, especially during the winter holidays. This year, four neighbors will be celebrating four different winter holidays. Throughout December, each family is looking forward to sharing their own special holiday with some time with family and friends to lighten up the progressively darker nights. And I'm just realizing something. Well, I think we were supposed to have a song. <laughs> yeah. Um, hold on, hold on. We, yes, so let's, Put a pin in that, sorry. <laughs> yes, thank you. One of the ways that everybody celebrated was coming together and singing a song. Please rise and body your spirit as we join in singing our opening hymn, number 228, Once in Royal David City. <laughs>
So after coming together and singing a lovely Christmas song, the families went back to their respective apartments. And throughout the rest of the month, they began experiencing their respective holidays. It was the first Monday of December at the Murray Settle household in apartment 3B. It's understandable that they forgot to get Chalica candles. After all, this is the first year they've celebrated the uniquely Unitarian Universalist holiday, and they're still learning how it's done. Celebrating Chalica involves lighting a chalice each night for seven days, one each day. Each day represents one of our seven UU principles. And on each day of Chalica, the Murray Settles try to do something that reflects the principle being honored on that day. At the first day of Chalica, and while they had a, a beautiful chalice that they had made at church, they couldn't find one single candle in their home. Can you imagine that one? I know what we can do, said Diana, the eldest daughter. Let's ask the super if he has a candle we can borrow. Down, she and Iris padded three flights to the super. You need a candle, girls, asked Carlos Fraticelli, the super. He opened a drawer and handed her a lumpy stick of wax. Well, Nancy and Steve didn't mind that the candle wasn't pretty. They lit the first candle of Chalica with it. And Diana said, each being is important. And Iris said, we covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Then Nancy said, you do not have to do anything to earn the love contained within the walls of our home. And Steve said, you do not have to be braver, smarter, stronger, better than you are in this moment to belong here with us. And Chalica was beautiful. About three weeks later, the Janeski, I saw Donna, she's here. Ha ha, Walling family. Now these families with hyphenations because they didn't decide on, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start uh, lobbying for, let's all pick a third name. <laughs> the Janeski Walling family gathered together in their apartment, 1F, preparing to celebrate the winter solstice. Stuart could be heard saying, it's broken. Donna came running, what's broken? Our sun candle, it snapped into pieces, Stuart said. Oh dear. The sun candle is central to the celebration of winter solstice. Everyone expects a sun candle. It reminded everyone that even though this is the longest night of the year, the sun is beginning its long journey back toward earth. Winter solstice is a time for celebration and rejoicing that the warm days of spring will return and the dormant earth will come back to life. Hmm, how can we celebrate without our sun candle, asked Stuart. Not to be deterred, Donna instructed him, Stuart, go ask a neighbor for a candle. He dashed up two flights to the Murray Settles and came back with the funniest looking candle they had ever seen, a lumpy and bumpy stick of wax. Our friends will laugh when they see our sun candle, Stuart said. But nobody laughed. Friends arrived and gathered around as they lit the sun candle and said these words. The wheel of the year has turned once more and the nights have grown longer and colder. Tonight, the darkness begins to retreat and light begins its return once again. As the wheel continues to spin, the sun returns us, returns to us once more. The funny looking candle gleamed as brightly as any star they had ever seen. Shortly thereafter, the Prager McPhillips family in part an apartment 2G was in an uproar. It's the first night of Hanukkah and we only have one candle. We don't have a helper candle, Munsell yelled from the closet. 
In the kitchen, Robert sighed. I forgot to buy a new pack of Hanukkah candles. Munsell's lip quivered. But we have to light our menorah at sunset. The stars will be out soon. No, no, it's not the end of the world, Munsell, Robert told her. I'll go ask a neighbor for a candle. Robert ran downstairs and rapped on the Janeski Wallings door. And up the stairs he climbed with the lumpy, bumpy, frumpy candle that they had gotten from the Murray Settles who had gotten from Carlos, the super. Munsell stared. That's not a Hanukkah candle, she groaned. It's too big. It's not pretty, agreed Robert, but a candle is blessed by what it does, not by how it looks. It'll shine. And shine it did. As Munsell raised the lumpy, bumpy, frumpy candle to light the first candle on the menorah, she and Robert said the traditional blessing. Baruch atai Adonai Eloheinu melech chalom asher kerishana b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu ladlik ner shel Hanukkah. In English, blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of all, who hallows us with good deeds, commanding us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. They'd never had a servant candle that burned so bright. Later that night, the family in 4D were to discover that in all of their preparations for their annual Advent dinner, one important item was overlooked. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> Anne McKinnon checked her list. Turkey in the oven, potatoes peeled, napkins folded just so, candles, Ah, how could she have forgotten Advent dinner without enough candles? Unheard of. It was the fourth Sunday of Advent and the Sunday before Christmas. Anne had a special dinner planned with her friends who would be leaving the area to join their families for Christmas. The Advent candles were to shine brightly in the midst of darkness, symbolizing and reminding us that Jesus came as the light into our dark world. How can that happen when we are short one candle? Rob suggests, let's run over to the Prager McPhillips apartment and see if they have a candle we can borrow. I know that they are celebrating Hanukkah tonight and that they use several candles in their celebration. Maybe we can borrow one. Rob ran to apartment 2G and Mr. Prager was kind enough to give them the lumpy, bumpy, frumpy, stumpy little candle that they had gotten from the Janeski Wallings, who had gotten it from the Settle Murrays, who had gotten it from Carlos, the super. Mr. Prager said, it's not pretty, but it'll burn. Rob brought back the ugly little candle and Anne with her artistic flair spread some pine cones and holly around the fourth the four Advent candles, even though the fourth one was pretty frumpy looking. Anne and Rob said a modified version of the traditional prayer for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Spirit of life and love and truth, we feel your presence as you comfort us and strengthen us and inspire us to be merciful and forgiving as the love in our hearts shines brightly for everyone. By the time her dinner guests arrived, the centerpiece glowed in the midst of darkness, and they and their friends celebrated with anticipation the coming of the baby Jesus. Now, a few days later came the biggest... <laughs> okay, so I tried to modify this story <laughs> so it would work for our congregation as intended. But it seems that maybe I fell short. You will hear the following. A few days later came the biggest snowstorm of the season. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have a late season hurricane if you do this again, right? Snow blanketed the front steps and made drifts on the windowsills. Then just after nightfall, the electricity went out. Flashlight beams flickered in a few windows. In 5B, the newest family at the apartments huddled together in the dark. Their clothes were still in suitcases. Their dishes were still in boxes. And Papa was somewhere in the city with a moving truck full of furniture. 
How will Papa find us? Nazreen asked. The street lights are out. Papa won't find us, cried Farouk. There's too much snow. Of course he will find us, Mama said. Nazreen, go next door and ask the neighbors for a candle. We'll put it in the window to light Papa's way. When Nazreen got to the McKennan family's door, Wilton opened it. He scratched his head. Not Wilton. Uh, Rob opened it. Sorry, Rob, you opened it and scratched your head. I think there's one left from our Advent wreath. He told Nazreen, he returned with a lumpy, bumpy, frumpy, stumpy, and ugly little candle that resembled a troll, Nazreen thought. Nazreen's mother lit the candle and set it in the windowsill. How's Papa going to see one little candle in a city like Jacksonville where there's a miraculous snowstorm going on? Farouk asked. But as they watched, the flame shimmered and grew. It glittered on the falling snowflakes until the dark street, street seemed spun with stars. Many blocks away, Papa slowly steered the big truck through snow's covered streets, thinking, I thought we moved away from snow. What did that sign say? Is that the right street? But then Papa noticed a glow up ahead. Maybe someone there could give him directions. Papa steered le left, left, <laughs> then right, then left, closer and closer to the glowing light. Papa turned a corner and gasped. There in front of him, five stories up, shone a warm, welcoming light. He was home. Papa climbed three floors, four floors, five floors, and then Papa's here, Nazarene and Farouk flew down the hall and into their father's arms. Come see our new house, Papa, cried Nazreen. And look, everyone else is coming too. The little apartment filled with neighbors. Some brought chairs and a folding table. Some made a bed out of blankets for Nazreen and Farouk. Carlos brought a small gas heater. The Murray Settles helped make some sandwiches. Others put a pot of soup together to warm on that camping stove and everyone welcomed Nazreen and Farouk and Mama and Papa to their new home. And the gnarled little candle glowed so brightly in the window that when the electric electricity finally did come back on, no one even noticed. Telling this story again reminds me of the lesson Jesus taught us about our inner light. According to the New American Standard Bible in Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 through 16, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine. In that spirit, we have a favorite song in our hymnal, which is shared by many denominations and was originally an African-American spiritual. I learned it at a Methodist summer camp. The hymn is number 118, This Little Light of Mine. Most of you know it. The lyrics we sing begin with, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. In our story, it's a wonder that for every family that needed it, there was a candle, there was a light, there was a community. And that candle, as a little lumpy, frumpy thing that it was, radiated pure bright light. So it just goes to show that we don't have to be perfect in any way to be useful to our community and to be worthy of love and appreciation. 
It's in those little acts of kindness and generosity that we undertake that lights our way on the path to wonder. <laughs>